making changes to their um, third party connections in groups specifically. Huh. And um, so the 22nd, I think, they're, 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 they're trying to stop people from doing it, basically. And they are, um, here we go, we're live. Oh, so the, the 22nd of this month, they're like telling all third party platforms that you can't stream to groups anymore. So I've I've been researching a way around it and I think I found a way around it, but it's gonna be a whole thing. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> yes, but we're here and we're live and we're gonna be talking about how to feed a dog with food sensitivities and allergies. And Kelly, this is your group, so. I don't want to okay. take over. <laughs> All right. Hi, everybody. Uh, this is Kelly Bone. How are you? And we also have Jessica. She's the one to the left of me in the screen. And then Kara Rose, who's down below. So Kara is known as Raw Paw Adventures, if you see her on the face in the Facebook group. And then Jessica also is, they're both pet nutritionists. And um, Jessica is as well. So if you want to ever do an online consult with somebody, they would be to be two good options. And we also have two other people as well. We have... Um, Lisa Mayer, and then also Dulcie's Legacy, who specializes in cancer. So today they're going to talk about how, how do you deal with a pet that's got allergies? And everybody thinks, oh, they're allergic to this, they're allergic to this. But they're going to discuss that today and talk about all the different things that could possibly cause allergic reactions or what we call intolerances. Um, and then we will be answering questions. So you can go ahead and um, type those in and then we'll monitor them and, you know, we'll try to answer them as we go. And at the end, we'll try to um, allow some time for us to answer any leftover questions. So with that, we will turn it over. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kelly. Yeah, I think um, a good place to start is, first of all, talking about the difference in allergies and sensitivities or intolerances, because there is a difference. And we all seem to like a lot of people are like, my dog is allergic, 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 allergic. And there is a difference because a true allergy, um, we, we're going to like never be able to feed <laughs> that food <laughs> to that animal. But a sensitivity is something that it's, it's, it can be temporary. It's something that the body is saying, nope, this is not working. This is not working. There's, there's something going wrong in the body and we can actually help support the body to do what it does best, which is to heal itself. And then we can test and and potentially be able to reintroduce those foods in the future once the dog's body has had a chance to um, heal, basically, from what's going on, which is generally inf inflammation is the root of all disease. So um, that's really what's going on. But do you care? I know Kara did a ton of research for today, which is wonderful. <laughs> um, so do my research, I do want to jump in though, just and say, yeah, I'm 100% yeah. sure that we're live because when I click on yeah, the yeah. Facebook, it mm -hmm. doesn't give me the option to watch the live video. So I just want to make sure before we keep talking, can anybody, can anybody yeah. log in and see if they can. So I am seeing it here and it's telling me on the screen that there are people watching. All right. Well, they're watching so, me look like a fool. So. No, no, no. I mean, it's okay. Yeah. So, um, the, valid, valid. All right. <laughs> um, All right. Well, we'll keep going and we'll see, but yeah. So, yep. um, yeah, it, we are, I see it. All right. Excellent. Don't, no one ever trust me when it comes to technology, please. <laughs> so allergies and sensitivities. Yeah. So I think that's a really good, um, really good to just really define the difference. So when I think about an allergy, I think about like your typical, um, you know, the kid that can't eat peanuts because their throat swells up and they're, they break into hives and their face, you know, turns purple and they have to go to the emergency room, right? Or someone who gets stung by a bee um, and they get anaphylaxis and they, you know, need their EpiPen, right? So that's an allergy. A sensitivity is, I ate this food and it gave me diarrhea. Um, you know, I, I used this lotion and it gave me a rash, right? So like a sensitivity is something that bothers you, um, but isn't going to be severe enough to potentially require like medical treatment. And my dogs decided that it's time to play. So I'm going to mute myself for a second and ask them to go somewhere else while Jess takes over. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So 
Um, one of the really unfortunate things I think is that a lot of traditional veterinarians don't um, don't really acknowledge sensitivities. They will do allergy testing. You can take your dog in and they will do allergy testing and they're like, here's the results of this blood test that we're, you know, we're, we're doing. They do it in different ways with animals. They can do blood tests now. Of course, you can, you think of the old way where they would like shave a patch and test a whole bunch of different things um, on the skin. They still do that too. And they, there are a lot of traditional veterinarians that like they only recognize true allergies. Like they're not, they just don't work with sensitivities and that's not, um, not, so it's not uncommon. Like if you were to go into your veterinarian, they're, they're, they're going to do an allergy test and they're going to find X, Y, Z that your dog may be allergic to and everything else is to them. It's just fair game. Mm -hmm. So with all of the, technology with all of the research that we have in gut health, there are tests available for sensitivities in dogs. Um, and there are a lot of them out there. Mm -hmm. Some of them I use with my clients more than others, but they're all, they all have their pros and cons. They're mm -hmm. all going to get you a starting point, like to a starting point. And when I talk, when I'm talking about a starting point, we're going to, generally do like a rotation and elimination diet. And we can talk about that in a little while, but they're all going to give you like a baseline. This is where we're going to start. And um, so some of the symptoms that and Kara's already started talking about symptoms of sensitivities and intolerances and in our dogs, this happens with cats too. Um, diarrhea is a big one. And, but that one can be hard for people to distinguish, um, because so many things can cause diarrhea. Um, but when we think of dogs that have a lot of food sensitivities, we're going to see, we can't see what's going on inside of their body and they can't tell us that they don't feel great. Right. So we start to see it popping up in dogs a lot with um, chronic ear infections, their paw pads are red and itchy. They're constantly licking. And it's not like just a seasonal, they've been out in the grass, it's spring kind of thing. Like they are just constantly like licking and licking and licking their paws and they're red and they're inflamed. Um, and same goes with like all over the skin, all over the body. I mean, you can, there are some dogs that are so severe, they, they lose huge patches of fur. Um, they're going to get potentially like welts on their body. And this is severe. Like the longer we let this go on in our dog, the longer this inflammation is occurring and um, leaky gut is allowed to progress. And we'll talk a little bit more about leaky gut in just a little bit. Um, the worse the symptoms can get. And a lot of times your veterinarian is so well-meaning, but what they know, what they've been taught is to treat the symptoms. And so they're going to give you allergy medication. And sometimes they'll start off with just, hey, I, it's probably seasonal allergies, right? Let's just give, well, you know, if it's an ear infection, they're going to give medication for ear infection, like probably, you know, the swabbing out the ear and the liquid and all the things. But um, they're going to do, sometimes they'll start with like, just give them like a um, over the counter generic, you know, allergy medicine and see if that helps. Right. And then they're going to progress when that doesn't, doesn't work. They're going to progress to, um, prescription pharmaceuticals. So like a cytopoint injection or Apoquel, um, which are immunosuppressants. So to like, if your dog is on one of these medications, please read the insert please do your research on this. It is absolutely up to you what you do with your pet and how you decide to, you know, treat them and work with your veterinarian to treat them, but they're immunosuppressants. So what they're doing basically is saying the immune system is going crazy, right? There's a ton of inflammation in the body. So the immune system is going crazy. You're seeing it in the skin, you're seeing it in the ears, you're seeing it in the paws. And we don't want to see those symptoms. So we're going to turn off the immune system so that it stops doing that. Could you think of a worse thing to do? <laughs> right? Why do we want to turn off our immune system? So do you want to add anything to that, Kara? <laughs> 
Yeah, no, so I agree. So, I, and I just want to take it back really quick and then I'll tell you maybe a little bit about my dog um, and maybe that will help people, I think, mm -hmm. relate. So in regard to testing, I know Jess had mentioned like um, testing at the vet, like skin testing. And then there's certain, um, like you can order a test, it'll come to your house, um, you know, and then you can send it back out. So you don't have to go through a vet to test. Um, but one thing I will say is kind of take the results with a grain of salt. Okay, it's not written in blood. It's not etched in stone. For example, I've had clients who, you know, they've never fed kangaroo and then they do a scan and it comes back, you're allergic to kangaroo. And they're like, how's this possible? I've never fed this before. So they can be helpful. They can give you a starting point. But if you get a test back and it's lit up in red, please don't panic. It doesn't mean that your dog can't eat. So just to put that out there. <laughs> That's very true. And I will say I did just for giggles, I did a sensitivity test on my dog. And um, I think it actually was kangaroo. That's something that she came back with as an intolerance. And I was like, what? And then I started thinking and I'm like, well, she does sometimes get into the cat food and the cats do eat some canned food. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I have like even though I I do buy like higher quality brands that I think are you know reputable and good like I don't know there could be something in that cat <laughs> that shouldn't be there yeah yeah you never know like when you're buying commercial foods unless it's like a really small company that has a lot of transparency and they're like doing videos online of their sourcing and the farms and the manufacturing process. Cause there are companies out there that are doing that. And they're generally very, very small companies. You have no idea what's actually in that food. And there have been so many tests done, especially on various kibble brands that come back and like, there is so much in that food that is not on that label. That it's just, it, it, will, it would blow your mind. <laughs> Yeah. In fact, you know what? Um, Odette Suter, Dr. Suter, and um, Chelsea Kent did a video today together, and they talked about pet food, and Chelsea got into it in a lot of detail. So it's on our inner group, the video. You can watch it. Everybody needs to watch that video. Yeah, that's on my list. I haven't had a chance to watch it today, but I've like, I'm, I saved the email so I can go back to it. <laughs> Chelsea's a wealth of knowledge. <laughs> oh my gosh. I Chelsea's amazing. And so, like, such an incredible herbalist too. So such a, such a resource. Um, so if you're in this situation where your pet ha it has a ton of food sensitivities, we want to look at instead of, okay, how do I want to say this? A lot of the clients that come to me, and I want you to talk about your dog, Kara. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the clients that by the time they get to me, by the time they get to any sort of whether they reach out to a holistic veterinarian or any sort of alternative um, medical practitioner or health coach or whoever it may be, they have given their dog so many different foods. They have tried so many different things, so many different proteins without addressing the underlying issue of why these food sensitivities are being created in the first place. And all we're doing every time we try something new, try, try something different without addressing what's going on, the inflammation inside of the body, we're creating additional sensitivities. And by the time they get to me, they're like, my dog can't eat anything. And I'm like, I understand why. <laughs> so what happened with your dog? So my dog, he's panting right next to me. Um, so my dog had an issue with chicken. So he started out uh, as a puppy, uh, as an almost 80 pound puppy by the time he was a year old, um, having these huge bouts of awful smelling diarrhea. And so he was crate trained at that time. Um, and so, you know, I'd come home from work and I'd find him in a puddle of diarrhea and it's really awful. And I would go to the vet and they'd be like, oh, well, you know, here's some metronidazole. And I'd be like, oh, okay. And it would help for a minute. It would help for a minute. And then I would continue feeding him his chicken and rice kibble. Um, and it didn't get better. And so it was actually not a vet, but a friend who said, oh, well, you know, a lot of dogs are allergic to chicken. Maybe you should switch them to something that's not chicken. So I did. And the watery diarrhea stopped, but he still never had really great stools. 
So then maybe at about a year and a half old, he started having really bad itching, licking, recurrent hot spots, recurrent ear infections. Um, you know, he would like shed a lot more than I would have expected. And so I went back to the vet because his paws would be like chapped and peeling and red. And so I went back to the vet and I was like, well, he has all these symptoms and I don't know what it is. And they're like, oh my gosh, he has seasonal allergies. Here's Cytopoint. So we did Cytopoint and we did that for almost two years. And the time in between would get shorter and shorter that it would control his symptoms. And I still didn't change his food. And so it wasn't until he was about, well, actually, so this was from about age one and a half to three, so about a year and a half. It wasn't until I kind of stumbled upon this world of fresh food that I realized that there was any alternative and that food can even be a cause of allergies. And so I switched his food to 100% fresh. I did some treatments for leaky gut, which we're going to talk about in a minute. And his symptoms resolved. And he hasn't had a hot spot or an ear infection. He no longer has diarrhea. And I feed him chicken with no problems. So chicken kibble would give him explosive watery diarrhea. Now I feed him chicken parts and there's no issue whatsoever. And so that's going to lead me to leaky gut, which is what my dog had. So leaky gut is essentially exactly what it sounds like. So um, I wanted to have like a prop, but I couldn't find anything in my house that was like a cheesecloth. So I'm going to use my fingers. The leaky gut. So you have these tight junctions here, right? And they should be very small and let only the smallest of molecules through. So when it comes to proteins, the smallest molecule breaks down into is amino acids. And so that is all that should pass through the gut and into the bloodstream. When you have damage to the gut, these junctions widen and all of a sudden you have these big holes and this allows larger proteins to leak through that don't belong there. Your body looks at them as a foreign invader and then attacks those proteins. And essentially that's how you get allergies or sensitivities. And that's what happened to my dog with chicken. He ate chicken kibble for a year and a half. That chicken protein was, so the kibble caused the leaky gut the protein leaked through into the bloodstream and his body said, this does not belong here. And then every time I fed him chicken, it got worse. I stopped the chicken, healed the gut, and then his body forgot that it was a problem because we waited a couple of years. I reintroduced the chicken and now it's no problem because he has a strong gut. Yes. That was excellent. Um, and it is all about the um, the inflammation in the gut, the tight junctions, and what is being allowed through um, in the, the gut lamina into basically where all of the blood vessels are. So this is where like it's, it's taking everything out into the rest of the body. And um, it's not just food that's getting through. It's anything in the body. So, and, and especially if we think about kibble, any, any highly processed food, we, there's potential for so much contamination, heavy metals, mycotoxins, like there, there's so much and that's getting, Pesticide. it's not just going, you pass it. Yes. Say. It's not, it's getting into the bloodstream, it's getting going all through the body. And so the immune system has no choice but to attack and to say, just like Kara said, this does not belong in the body. And we know that, and we know what it is, we've identified it, and we're going to continue to attack this um, because it doesn't belong here. So um, I do wanna say, and, and there are some, some supplements that I will use with my clients, but I, I really want to put like a huge disclaimer out there that you cannot out supplement a bad diet. So if you don't change the food and use supplements to quote unquote treat leaky gut, it's not going to work. You're going to have, you have to figure out what is causing the, the sensitivities in your dog stop feeding them. You have to remove anything that's causing inflammation in the body, um, specifically with food. And you have to reintroduce foods that your dog has not previously eaten. We need to feed them on a constant rotation. So we're not 
creating additional sensitivities. We're not going to feed any one thing long enough for the body to create additional sensitivities to it. In the meantime, we can do other things. Fresh food, first of all, just switching from a highly processed diet to a fresh food diet is going to drastically reduce the inflammation in the body. And you are leaps and bounds (laughs) ahead of most people right there. Um, I'm again, I'm very, very food forward. So I like to use things like bone broth, which is really, really healing for the gut Mm -hmm. and also adds a ton of um, wonderful nutrients hydrating for the body, which if your dog has been eating or your cat has been eating kibble for any period of time, they are chronically dehydrated and their their body is like, please give me some moisture. So I love to use bone broth for that. Um, And there are some other things that I know, Kara, you have some things that you used with your dog that, that you can talk about, but none of the, no supplement out there is going to help your dog is going to fix their gut unless you change the diet first. Yeah. And Jessica, I just wanted to add too. a lot of times when you start going off of kibble and you're going to a fresh or gently cooked diet or what have you, a lot of times people write and say, Oh, Kelly, I did what you told me to boy. Now my dog's even itchier than they were. And the reason for that is because the dog's detoxing, they're getting all those toxins out of their, their system. And so there's ways you can help that. Like, like um, Jessica said, you could give them bone broth, you could give them, um, raw fermented goat's milk. Mm-hmm. You can do a detox with milk, milk thistle. You could give them a Dord beast leaky gut protocol. There's a host of things or a combination of things that you can do. And you can do a later, a later approach to really help that detox along and help it kind of speed up. But we've had some people, their dogs are really itchy for 90 days. And I always tell people, you know what? It took a long time for your dog to get that bad. It's not going to be fixed overnight. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. And we talked about quite a few things to help support the gut through a transition in the video we did last month. So that's also um, probably still pinned in the group, but certainly available in the group to to search for as well. Yeah. And so, I mean, some of those things, and I still, I still give them just because you, you, it, they aren't things that you use only to heal the gut, right? You can continue to use them to support the gut. So um bone broth like Jess mentioned goat's milk like Kelly mentioned um kefir fermented veggies are excellent um a couple of things that I haven't used but I do want to incorporate into the diet are phytoplankton um which I know that adored beast apothecary makes um so they have they have that on their website that you can get their leaky gut protocol I used myself um on on bear and I felt that that was integral, I think, in really helping to heal his gut. Um, you know, so it's, it's not like a one and done heal the issue and then kind of wash your hands of it. And you're like, all right, everything is fine. You have to remember that you really want to keep supporting the gut and all the things that the gut needs. You're not just feeding the dog. When you provide food, you're feeding the gut and the microbiome. And it's really important to have a diverse, healthy microbiome. Um, and that will help prevent inflammation to the gut lining itself. Yeah. Um, one, one little caveat I would say, because a lot of people just don't like, we, we don't know what we don't know. Mm-hmm. And our traditional veterinarians as well, meaning as they are, they are overwhelmed. They, you know, just don't have a lot of training in nutrition generally, unless they seek it out on their own. And so they are just throwing band-aids on things and we're going and we're going and we're just trying to get by with our dogs every day. And um, my, my pet sitter actually had a dog who had very severe leaky gut. And let me tell you, I, the way this dog smelled, I don't know (laughs) if she will ever be able to get the smell out of her house. It was so bad. Um, And So the caveat that I want to mention is the worse your pet is. So like if you've gotten to the point where your dog is losing weight, can't gain weight, like there's a malabsorption issue going on, Mm -hmm. there could also potentially be something called SIBO, which is small intestine bacterial overgrowth, um, which is basically like 
the the bacteria that is collecting and proliferating in this in the small intestine is basically taking all the nutrients from the food and your dog just isn't getting them and that's oversimplified but basically that's what's happening and we don't want to feed fermented foods in that situation i would absolutely recommend you work with some sort of holistic practitioner if you can get in with one of the holistic vets that um, supports this group that's wonderful there's a lot of them that do telemed um, there are multiple as kelly was mentioning in the beginning there are multiple nutritionists in the group um, holistic pet health coaches in the group that can help you through this um, so it really does depend on the severity like of what's going on with your dog but there are i just wanted to kind of throw that out there i don't want people to just yeah. like throw fermented foods at their dogs <laughs> Yep, and if you're looking for the list of um, the canine nutritionists as well as the vets, you would go under featured at the top of the group, and I have a post that has them all listed in there, and you just go ahead, and um, there's not a phone number for you to call. You just send them an email on the email that they provided. Now, for the one that says vets, I would, I know people tend to say, oh, Judy Morgan's on there. I'll contact Judy. She's pretty swamped right now, and she's not taking online consults, but she is on there. Um, but she's going to refer you to one of the other ones. So just start with one of the other ones. <laughs> yeah. Better Good handle. tip. <laughs> um, yeah. But see, so SIBO, so that, it can be like, I think I feel really hard to differentiate between the two. Um, and they can, one can cause the other, right? So it's, mm -hmm. SIBO can cause leaky gut, um, yeah. you know, and so it is, I think it is important to kind of try and differentiate and diagnose. And so, um, there's two companies that I can think of, and I actually use both because I just like to be able to compare. Um, so Animal Biome is one, and it's going to tell you all about the dog's microbiome. And, oh, <laughs> nice. Um, and so that will tell you, like, is there too much of one thing? Is there not enough of another? Um, you know, are you missing, like, those additional good um like pathogens in the gut, because it's not just bacteria that's in your gut, right? You have yeast, it's good for you. You have viruses, they belong there. Um, and so you should have a, like a good amount of everything and they compete for space, which is what prevents one from kind of rising above the others. And so when you get that imbalance, that can cause the SIBO. And so um, animal biome is good for testing that. And then also innovative pet labs is the other one that I used. And they have a couple of different ones, um, but they have the one that will test for leaky gut. They have one that will show you your biome or they have a comprehensive, which shows you all of them. Um, so I, I am happy that I did those because it gave me an answer that I was curious about. Um, but I just think everybody should, if you're considering going down the path of what I would call, I guess, diagnosis, of what the underlying issue is just um you know kind of consider what is your price point and take it from there and you can always ask people hey did you do this what did you think about it um I mean, glacier peak no uh, uh so yeah so glacier peak just like to do an allergy um, an allergy test i like glacier peak for that i've also seen five strands and then also um dr dodds has the nutriscan um, but just for like specifically for looking at the gut microbiome, animal biome does that. And you send like a fecal sample in, and then same thing for innovative pet labs, you send that in. So that will tell you, it, it won't tell you what, are, what is your dog allergic to or sensitive to. It will tell you what does your microbiome look at, look like, mm -hmm. excuse me. And that's usually what you need to tackle to treat the sensitivities. So, Yeah. And so I'm going to see if I can put this on the screen. So um, again, Facebook is so wonderful. And so we can't see anybody's names on here, but <laughs> um, she has been dealing with her, her rescue has a really bad belly rash, armpits, very, very typical. I'm so sorry that's happening. Um, changed food, allergy testing, uh, has her on a, a dehydrated food with oats i will say like i i pretty much do not feed any um carbohydrate any starchy car starchy carbohydrates mm -hmm. to to dogs especially if they have um gut issues 
But I, I like the quercetin, um, the goat's milk, colostrum. That's wonderful. And mm -hmm. the fact that they're trying to eat things that they that are not food, um, sticks, parts of plastic parts. Yeah, like generally speaking, animals are seeking out nutrients. But the reason that I put this up on the screen is because um, I really want to point out that if you're pet is dealing with leaky gut, um, which it kind of sounds like your pet might be with all of these skin issues going on. Um, it isn't just the matter of changing the diet. It's also the matter of rotating. So if we're, if, if say your animal was eating beef, your dog was eating beef, you found out your dog was sensitive to beef. So you switched to Turkey. Well, that's not, you know, it's only allowing your animal to create sensitivities to that turkey now because we're feeding the same thing day in, day out with our animals. So rotating, rotating the foods, um, I like to do it every single day. And I know that that sounds like a lot, but if you work with somebody who is going to walk you through it, it you shouldn't have to do it for a very long period of time. Um, and this is why it can be so beneficial to make your own food for your pets um, because you get to control the ingredients that are going into that diet and you can change them out every single day. And that doesn't mean that, you know, if you feed turkey on Monday, you can't feed it again on Thursday or Friday. You can. We just want to keep it, keep it moving, keep it rotating so that the body can't create additional sensitivities. Um, yeah. Opinion on Glacier Peak. I think Glacier Peak is a really great test for um, sensitivities. And there again, there are other ones like Kara mentioned, there's the five strands, there's the NutraScan, there's um, Yukari has one. There's a bunch of them out there. And I mean, I'm not going to, like if you were to do a five strands test and then come to me, I'm not gonna not take you on as a client because you didn't do a Glacier Peak or I'm not gonna make you do a Glacier Peak because it, you did another one. Like, we're going to work with whatever you've done. Um, they're all a baseline. They all have pros and cons. They all have the ability to miss something <laughs> as well because they're a snapshot in time. So you send that you send that um, hair and saliva sample in to Glacier Peak or to Five Strands or to Yukari or wherever you're sending it. And two weeks later, you get the result so much can have changed in your dog's body in that two weeks. So they're all of them are just like a starting point yeah. to move forward. But Jessica, just a clarification. We get this question a lot in the group. So you said, you know, do a rotation of proteins and stuff like that. But let's say the person that was just on here saying that she's feeding on his kitchen, let's say she starts transitioning to something else. Does she start out and just feed one protein for a couple, couple weeks to see how that protein does and then introduce another one since, or do you just say, just start rotating them right away? I want, yeah, I'm going to do, if we're, especially if we're starting out with a sensitivity test, I'm going to look at that sensitivity test and see what is not showing sensitive. And we're going to start there. Right. And I'm going to put together some recipes, probably won't be balanced at first, but we can talk about, we did talk about balance. We can talk about balance in another one if we need to. Um, but we, every single day, we're going to switch it out. So it might be turkey with kale and um, I don't know why can't I think of any foods turkey with kale and and uh, shiitake mushrooms. There you go, shiitake mushrooms <laughs> one day, and then we're gonna do or the next day we're gonna do pork with zucchini and asparagus. Like I don't, we're gonna switch it up. Anything, yeah, every day, and um, that's again why. Okay, the, yeah, the, the holistic vet, she's saying the holistic vet suggested the oats. I don't doubt that, and that's okay. I just, I personally, everybody everybody practices differently, and I personally don't see, and we talked about this last time too, every food has energetics. Every food has a purpose in traditional Chinese medicine. Um, so never say never, but like I just don't see a benefit generally speaking, and adding starchy carbohydrates to dog's food. And oats is a grain and dogs don't eat grains. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm the same vein as well. Um, and one thing I just want to point out too, and I'm so sorry that we don't know the 
person's name because it doesn't show up on here, but regarding the, um, you know, the rash on the belly and armpits, she said she's being weaned off steroids right now. That's just one really important thing to remember. And this is not an entire talk on, you know, steroids or Apoquil or Cytopoint or anything like that. But if your dog is on those and you're transitioning them to fresh food and trying to get on holistic, um, you know, methods or more natural methods of allergy uh, treatment, please wean. Because if you stop cold turkey, it can cause a resurgence of symptoms that are 10 times worse than they were when you first suppressed them. And it may need to be an extremely slow wean for that to not happen. So don't I either talk to your vet about it, talk to a nutritionist about it, or ask for some advice in the group and some of our admins can answer you, but don't do it on your own. Um, just be careful of that. And it's the same thing for humans. You need to wean things down sometimes or you can actually throw the body into a crisis. So I just wanted to put that out there. Yeah, I didn't I didn't read that far, I guess. Um, okay, my dog found a bone in the yard. Yeah, I would be worried too. Why is there a bone in the yard? No, I'm just kidding. Like, I, I would want to know what kind of bone it is. Did somebody like eat KFC and like toss the, the bones into your yard? Or is this like a dead animal bone? <laughs> like, like, does, did an animal just like randomly die in your yard? I want to know. <laughs> yeah, if it's a cooked bone, I yeah. I don't love that because cooked bones can be dangerous. So just keep a really close eye on the stools or, you know, if you are if you think they ate a lot of it, you could consider a vet visit for an x-ray. Um, and if it is a, an animal that perhaps passed away in the yard, like a bunny or a bird or something like that, then I probably would just maybe consider doing like a natural dewormer, or like maybe some pumpkin ground pumpkin seeds for like a week or so, just, just in case, but, or again, you could always take a stool sample to the vet. So, but we can't really give too much of an answer without having more info. Yeah. Um, okay. So, so yeah, if you cook, cook a large batch, um, then cook multiple batches and, you know, freeze, freeze part of them. I, I, but if you're doing, if, if you have a dog and you're just starting out a rotation, an elimination diet with, with or without um, a sensitivity test to start you off with, I wouldn't cook large batches of anything because you don't know what is going to trigger your dog at this point. Um, so I don't, I don't necessarily want you to cook large batches right away until, until we find enough foods that your dog can eat that we can create more balanced recipes with them. And then you can create larger or cook larger batches of food. Yeah. And I know it's, it's frustrating because like buying in bulk tends to be more cost effective. And I, I know that I have six pets and I know that. And that actually really influences the way I make food for my pets because that's what I can afford right now. But when you're doing, when you are dealing with a dog with really severe allergies, it's important to not keep blasting them with the same food for, you know, a week for two full weeks, because then they can, I don't want to say allergies. I want to say sensitivities, but then they can develop a sensitivity to that food while you're working on healing the gut. So that's why it's so important to do make small batches, or you could still buy maybe the bulk package, and freeze some of it, like just that, mm -hmm. if you have enough freezer space. So, um, yeah, so that's, how you, that's how you can switch every day. You can either buy small amounts and make, you know, a two, three days worth of multiple things and have them in the fridge, or you buy the family pack that was, you know, twenty percent off, and you just pop it in the freezer, and then you pull out, separate it, pull out small batches, and do it like that. I think that would probably be the best way in regard to money saving. Yeah, I mean, and that is a, a big. Um, a big factor in what we're all doing all the time, but especially right now. And um, but you also have to look long term at, you know, what is the cost of not doing this mm -hmm. for your dog? And depending again, depending on the severity of what's going on with your with your dog, um, Sometimes we do have to get more picky about the sourcing of the foods as well. Um, when dogs do have a lot of sensitivities, when if you know if you're just catching this at the beginning, great for you. Like you're you're in a good spot, right? But if this has been going on for a really long time, and nothing, none of the you know underlying, none of the underlying causes have have been addressed then we might have to look at, you know, like the, um, 
environmental working groups website, look at their list of, you know, the dirty dozen and the clean 15 and, and know what is beneficial to buy organic and what maybe you can skip buying organic. So there's the clean 15 list where you can potentially skip the, you know, price tag of organics and then the dirty dozen list where we want to say, no, we really need to buy organics in these categories um, because we want to remove as much as possible that's causing inflammation in the body and pesticides are causing inflammation in the body. Um, so that's something to think about too. Like a lot of times I will have people come to me and they're like, you know, I, I, I've, I've got this recipe and it, or, you know, I'm, I'm doing the rotation and a diet and, and, um, we're, I'm buying X, Y, Z and, and we're, it's just not, it's still not like we're, we're we've made improvements, but I haven't gotten to where I want to want to get to. And I audit what they're actually putting in the food and it's not the animals that they're buying. So chicken, which I don't love doing. We generally don't start any dog off with chicken because it, it, it is so common that dogs have sensitivities to chicken. Um, primarily, I think, because one of the, the quality of the meat, what the, what the chickens are, you know, the living conditions, what they're being fed. So sometimes we'll have to switch to grass fed, grass finished beef. We're going to look at that, you know, the, I think it's ewg.org, the environmental working group. We're going to look at the dirty dozen list and we're going to make sure we're only buying those produce items that are organic. And we're just going to like audit every little thing. And sometimes that can make a really big difference. Yeah. When I, when I am helping with recipes, I will like designate organic, this vegetable, you know, like mushrooms should always be organic. They're bioaccumulators. Leafy greens should be organic. They're one of the most heavily sprayed with pesticides. Berries. You mm -hmm. want to give your dog some antioxidants, so you want to give them some blueberries? That's excellent. Please get them organic. Berries are heavily sprayed with glyphosate. And so there's no point in feeding something that was sprayed with pesticides because you want to give, you know, some antioxidants. So it's like there's certain things. So, yes, the Dirty Dozen and Clean 15 is a great list to look at. And that's how I get decide what's going to be organic for my dogs and for myself because I'm not in a position to feed everything organic right now. And I hope right. one day I will be, but if you have to make a choice between this vegetable or this vegetable rather than both, that's a great starting point. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's see. My basset has raw armpits. Poor baby. Um, yeah. Holistic vet suggests elimination diet. That's wonderful. So feed only one protein for eight weeks. Right. Um, that isn't the way I would do it. <laughs> I don't want to throw any shade on your holistic vet though. <laughs> um, so and I, she added a Chinese herb. I love herbs. Yeah. Um, for internal wind. Okay. I don't know that. Um, Worse. Yeah. So um, I don't know if you did any sensitivity testing um, to lead up to this. It's possible if you didn't that the protein that was selected also has a sensitivity to it again like if we go back to the beginning of the conversation a lot of times we don't actually know what's in that kibble we're feeding our dog mm -hmm. or our cat we think we do and we're reading we're you know reading the labels hopefully we're reading the labels <laughs> but a lot of times we don't actually know what's in that food and do you um, check what that label says did you do an analysis on that food? I, yeah, I'm not afraid so. to brand drop. Do you remember the time Rachel Ray's dog food tested positive for dog? So you know you don't you're, you don't know. There's no way to know. Um, so I agree. What are you feeding? That's very important. Did you do sensitivity testing? My dog is drinking water next to me. So it's very loud. Okay. Uh, so yeah, did you do sensitivity testing? Uh, are you feeding kibble? And then also just to say. This, so raw, like raw armpits, red armpits, the armpits in the corn folds are very common areas for yeast. Mm -hmm. So perhaps it's not even an allergy. Your dog may just have yeast overgrowth because um, those are the areas that tend to like secrete. There was just a really great, I'm going to share this after the video. I got an excellent um, email with an article from Four Legger talking about like shampoos and how yeast can present on the skin and which areas and why and like which um, natural shampoos are uh, 
like good choices for that kind of thing. But she, she, Melissa had written some really good things in there about like what areas are, are more likely to show yeast and why. So I'll post that after this. Um, but yeah, this might not even be a sensitivity. It could just be yeast. So I would investigate further. Absolutely. And, then also, and then also, like I said, a lot of times it's going to get worse before it gets better. So just because your dog two days after you started the raw or gentle, gently cooked diet is getting worse, doesn't mean it's not working. It just means they're detoxing. So again, yeah. there's things you can do to help them detox. And Absolutely. You see these die off, which can look really bad and really scary. And that's what happened to my golden retriever when I started tackling his gut health. I tried, started treating the yeast and he had yeast die off with a nasty gunky ear and that's how it flushed out of his system. And so that's a, a great, like Kelly said, it can look worse before it gets better. And that doesn't mean get scared and stop. It means work with a professional who's going to help you through every step of the way, including when it's 2 a.m. And all of a sudden your dog woke up and he's scratching himself silly. Yeah. Yes. So that's where I was going to with the yeast die off. So especially if you went from a high carbohydrate food to a low or no carbohydrate food, um, that is, you could very well see an, a, a, a yeast die off pretty quickly. And depending on how bad it was, the, the die off will be worse than the original symptoms. Like, I don't know that I've ever seen a die off not be worse <laughs> than the original symptoms. Um, and there may be multiple stages of die-offs as well. That's mm -hmm. yeast are yeast are tricky. They are so tricky. Um, we got ten minutes, you guys. Okay, okay. So yeah, um, I think we covered most everything. Um, even if if you don't have the means to start out with the sensitivity test. That's okay. Mm -hmm. um, what I like to do is do our best to go back and map out everything your dog has eaten in the last six months mm -hmm. and start with foods that are not on that list. Continue doing, you know, doing the, the rotation every day. Um, you're going to see pretty quickly in most of these dogs if they're going to have a reaction to a food. Mm. Um, more often than not, it's within hours of eating. You're going to see a dog have a reaction to, to the food. Um, so don't, don't feel like hopeless if you don't have the means to do a sensitivity testing up front. There's, you can still. Um, you know, do your best, map everything out to the best of your ability and just say, we're not feeding any of that and start with new, but all of this can be really, really overwhelming. And I get that. And that's why there are people like us, <laughs> um, who can help you through it. Um, whether again, whether that's one of the holistic veterinarians that are doing consults, um, that are, you know, linked in the, are Featured. listed, yeah, yeah, listed in the group, um, a pet health coach, a nutritionist, um, though, like do, do your research on who you hire as well. If you are going to hire somebody, because not all nutritionists are created equal. A lot of them will still use synthetics. A lot of them will still use carbohydrates, um, starchy carbohydrates, grains, different things like that. And um, that is, especially if you're dealing with yeast, especially if you're dealing with yeast, that is not something you want to do. Um, so do your research with anybody you hire. I think anybody listed in this group is not going to lead you down the wrong path. So that's a great place to start. Yeah. And there are other groups too that, you know, we like, Essentially, if you see any of us recommending a group, it's because they're a great group. Um, Dr. Judy Morgan has a group. There's a CBD dog health or a CBM. Um, sorry, it's not CBD dog health, but it, there's like a group that's for CBD um, and they have like all holistic practitioners in there. There's a lot of you can follow the holistic vets. They all have their own um you know, Facebook pages and, and business pages and things like that. And they're free Roberts and they give good advice, you know, and it's and it's not like it's not advice that says 
try my product. It's going to help you, right? They're not like selling things on pages, just like we don't get anything for, you know, I mentioned Animal Biome and um, uh, Innovative Pet Labs. We don't, there's, there's no kickback. Um, you know, it's just things that from experience we have used or we have recommended and seen other people use and have had good results from it. So um, I think I agree, just kind of vetting and seeing what they're about. What, why, why do they exist? Did, is it transparent? Um, are they, you know, I, it's, you can, you can find a lot by reading reviews um, and just asking people their opinion. You know, if you see people, oh, you use this person, how did it go? What did you think? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So um, joined late, how do we do a sensitivity test? There are lots of sensitivity tests out there. There's um, Glacier Peaks, NutriScan, Yukari, Five Strands. There are lots of sensitivity tests out there. They're at home tests. So you order the test kit, it comes in your mailbox, you send in a saliva and hair sample, mail it in, and they send you the results back. It's really super easy to do. Um, they all have different price points. They all have pros and cons. So pick the one that you feel resonates best for you. Um, and, and I then, like because it, yeah. um, it includes the environmental, which is nice um, because a lot of dogs will have environmental air allergies, my dog included. So, you know, to, to be able to say like, oh, well, I eliminated all of the food things that were a problem, but they're still itching or having symptoms. It could be the environment. Um, which is the case for my dog. It's much better now that he's on fresh food, but you can't get rid of the pollen and the trees waving in the breeze. Um, so, um, and the name of the uh, Facebook group is CBD and Holistic Pet Advice. Um, I just, and, and I wanna rem remind everybody that a supplement is not gonna, is not a cure-all, it's not gonna fix everything. No matter what, no matter what test you're doing, no matter what marketing that you're, you know, advertisements you're seeing on social media, no supplement is going to fix anything unless you change the diet. Um, so yes, there are supplements that are great, but you have to work on the diet as well. Yeah. Um, and any of these tests, whether you're doing Glacier Peaks, whether you're doing Animal Biome, whatever it is, a lot of them have their own line of supplements and every recommendation on that result that you're getting back is going to recommend their products. I'm not saying that their products aren't great. In some cases, I absolutely love their products, but not necessarily in all cases. So um, if you're struggling at all, please work with a professional that can help you navigate these things because let's just take Glacier Peaks, for example, and I'm not picking on them because I love their test as well. Every single thing they're going to recommend to you is a Glacier Peaks product. And that just may not be because that's all they have to recommend to you because that is their business. Yeah. Um, that may not be the best thing for your dog. It may be, but it may not be. So um, don't like you know, we get sucked into these like supplement graveyards where you try everything. And I don't want you to do that. That is, I mean, I've been there. It is such a waste of money. Please don't do that. Yeah. Put your money toward the real food first. And then absolutely. Sure <laughs> how, about, how about this one? I'm struggling so much with my five pound Maltese, got the glacier test and he's allergic to so much. Is that the one you just read? So I switched to, I did not Viva okay. pure and he's loving, he's, he isn't loving he isn't eating. Loving eating. Okay. Yeah. I mean, every animal is different. I don't know how old your dog is. If they weren't already accustomed to a raw food diet, it may be like a stark transition for them. If they're an older, I love feeding a raw food diet. I mm -hmm. think it is species appropriate. Um, and that said, it may not be the best solution for every animal, especially animals that are really sick, especially aging animals. It can be hard. Like we lose digestive enzymes as we age just naturally. It can be more difficult for them to, to digest it on their own. Um, so depending on how much you bought, you could try adding some digestive enzymes to see 
if that helps him and he feels better eating it. Um, but you may also want to consider doing a gently cooked. Um, and if you food. email Viva, they will give you instructions on how to safely cook their food. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. it's specific. It's a specific temperature and a specific amount of time. And I can't remember off the top of my head, but their bone is ground finely enough that you can, but please email them and they will give you those instructions. Right. Yes. Yes. So um, we only have a few minutes left. Somebody did ask again where to find the list in the group, Kelly, of people you recommend to work with. So like, okay. I guess that that's in everybody. The list for the um, nutritionists as well as the vets are up at the top of the group. You're going to see a area that says featured and you want to go and you want to look for the post that's, that's got all that information in it. Also, there's a different post that has all of our pet food information. So it's got all of our, our or not our recommended, but our list of human grade foods for the United States, for Australia, New Z um, Canada, UK, they're, they're all listed there. So you wanna look at those. It also explains to you what's the difference between a feed grade food and a human grade food. It also has a link to teach you how to understand and learn and interpret your pet food labels. And that's really important. Before you go buy anything, whether it's a treat or anything, you really need to understand what the pet food ingredients are. It also has, as Kara has done for us, it has a great little graphic that has all the canine, uh, all the nutrition classes that you can take and you can sign up for. They're anywhere from nine, uh, $49 or $99, I believe, to um, $500. And there's a variety of them. And, you know, if your pet's relatively young, I would definitely recommend you sign up for nutrition class because it is going to be a big eye opener for you. Um, also, if you're feeding kibble, please look at and watch the um, video called Pet Fooled on YouTube. If there's one thing you're going to ever do for your dog, that's probably the best thing you can do to get started and to really learn about um, pet food. Yeah. And I think it might be on Amazon Prime, too. Um, okay. If it's cool with you guys, uh, can we wrap it up with this question of what do you do for environmental allergies? Yeah. Um, so, cause I talked about it with my dog. So I use CBD. This is what allowed me to get my dog off of Cytopoint. So I'm a very big believer in the anti-inflammatory natural properties of CBD. And it worked really well for me. That doesn't mean it's going to work for every dog and you need to find the dose that works for your pet. But I use CBD and I think that it's really, really helpful. Other things that can help would be local honey or bee pollen, um, quercetin, which somebody else recommended on here, I saw in the comments. Um, um, the Winpro, Winpro before, and I know Jess just interviewed uh, somebody from Winpro on her Pet Parenting Reset uh, podcast. I would listen to it. It was very eye-opening. So I've used Winpro before. Pineapple stems, stinging nettles. Um, I, there's a lot of things. Colostrum. Please make sure that you get it from uh, a good source though. Um, make sure that it's like a humane and stuff. Um, I, I used earth buddy pet, uh, colostrum, which I'm about to add into my dog's diet again right now, because it's the spring. He needs additional support in the spring for his environmental allergies. Mm -hmm. Um, so I don't need it year round, just extra support in the spring. So there are a lot of holistic natural things that you can do and you may need a combination of multiple. That's okay. Mm -hmm. Um, but there, there is holistic help out there for environmental issues that are not, um, prescription drugs. Also in the group, if you go to albums, well, it might be listed depending on which kind of device you're using. It could say media slash media, and then you go to albums, or it might say just albums. Go to albums. We have two different albums that would be very helpful for you. There's one that's called Allergies, and there's another one that's called Apoquil and Cytopint, I believe. So you want to look at those. We've got a lot of helpful information there, too. Mm -hmm. Yes. And just because you brought up colostrum, there are a lot of like moral and ethical concerns with that. I also have an interview on my podcast with Dr. Joe Casper, um, and he completely breaks down why you need to be so skeptical <laughs> about colostrums on the market um, mm -hmm. and what to look for. He is a human medicine doctor who, who has human supplements, um, but his colostrum supplement is safe for all species. And um, so we broke that down and very, very eye opening. If you're, if you're already giving colostrum or you're interested in it, like there are a lot of like ethical concerns with that. So be very careful about where you're sourcing that from. Jessica, yeah. can you please tell the, our viewers here, what is your podcast call or your group? The yeah. Group? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> 
the, the, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the podcast is called the pet parenting reset and you can get it anywhere you can go to the pet parenting reset.com and listen to it but you can listen to it on apple spotify google play wherever wherever you are you can listen to it you guys i have to tell you guys i've been watching her podcast or watching her on on lives for about a year and a half now and then all of a sudden I asked her to be a moderator, not realizing it was the Jessica Fisher. <laughs> <laughs> You're funny. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. What was this? Yeah. So um, thank you guys so much for being here and for all of your wonderful questions and for participating. And thank you, Kelly, so much for this group, um, giving people a place to ask these questions because it really is so hard to, so and hard guys, to know. If you have other topics you would like us to discuss in the future, could you just drop them in the comments so we can look at doing additional ones in the future? Yeah, we'll make sure the comments stay open for maybe an hour or so after this so that anyone who has questions, it can be answered. And if there's something that you want to ask or that you want us to cover or other people, doesn't have to be, you know, myself, but pop it in there and we will see what we can discuss to help you. Awesome. Oh, Thank um. You. Yeah. Also, somebody said, uh, share the link for the CBD group, Kara or somebody. Can you drop that in there after? Um, yeah, I'll put that in there. And the CB so the CBD I use is CBD Dog Health, but there are other ones on the market. But that the group that's CBD and Holistic Pet, I'll put it in there. And if you also look in my group, just um, do the magnifying glass and type in CBD. We have a graphic that has a list of the CBDs we recommend in the group. Yeah. Awesome. All right. All right thank you guys right. so much. Okay. Thanks, guys.